Hey everybody, it's Kevin from 3D Printed Props, and in today's video, I'm gonna be doing an unboxing, assembly, and review of the Creality K1 Max printer. So I've actually had the Creality K1 Max for a couple months now. I usually will do a review a little quicker than this, but I've gotta tell you, I have just been cranking out prints on this thing. There's usually something on it and it's usually working. <laughs> so I haven't had time to really sort of take it down and do a you know review and take a look at these prints and everything. So let's go over uh, some of the things we wanna cover in this video. Uh, I'm gonna show you just a quick sort of unboxing towards the end. It's really, really simple to assemble this thing. There's also, uh, we're gonna look at some prints that are right here, and we're gonna talk about some you know, tips and tricks to get the most out of this printer, uh, including uh, one add-on that I cannot wait to do and I actually have it printed out right here and we'll talk about that later. So a few things right off the bat about the printer spec wise that most people care about, right? This is a 300 by 300 by 300 printer. So that is your print volume, which is pretty big. You can see the stuff on the table here I've printed on here and we'll look at these in a second. So we've got that going for it. The other thing it has is a magnetic bed, flexible bed, which is awesome. And it has these little notches in the back with a screw that lines up to it. So when you slide it in the back, it just sort of goes right in the spot that it needs to. I really, really like that. Now, also, this will do all your bed leveling. You don't have to fool around with little you know, wheels anymore. A couple of the printers I've been fooling around with lately that I'll be doing reviews on are like this, these auto bed leveling, you know, uh, just amazing printers that you really can pull out of the box and use. The other thing that this has going for it that I have not had the pleasure of using before are some of these, uh, it's software. Uh, it's software is very intuitive, it's very easy to use. It's a great little slicer. I printed all these things right out of the box. I didn't really even fiddle with the, the settings. I'm, I'm working on that right now, but I was super happy with what I got. The other thing that this has is a camera. So you can be in your office, or you can be someplace in your house, and you can actually view and see how a print's going, if it's failed or not. That is awesome, I really, really like that. But I'm gonna let you know a little secret. I have not had a print fail on me yet. That wasn't my fault, and <laughs> we'll talk about that. But it has been flawless. Now. I said one was my fault. That's because I put accidentally put PET G filament in it and had it set to uh, PLA and uh, in the slicer, and of course it just didn't work. But that's my fault. Other than that, right out of the box, I was printing things. And that's what I love about these just plug and play printers. I plug this thing in after I put it together, which took no time whatsoever. Again, we'll watch that at the end. And this thing has been printing almost nonstop, and I love it. Now, let's take a look at some of the prints that I made. Uh, right off the bat, you might recognize this guy. Uh, if you haven't, check out the Thanksgiving movie by Eli Roth. It is amazing, big horror movie fan, and I'm really digging that. So here's a mask that this printed, and the layer lines look great. Again, this was no monkeying with the profile yet. There's some things I really could tweak to get a much better print, but you know me, as long as the layer lines are pretty fine, which these are, I'm gonna be sanding this, priming it, painting it to make it look just like John Carver's mask. But these are the kind of like large things you can print on this because of the body of it, the, the volume of print. Now, some of the other things I printed uh, were uh, uh, this helmet. Now, this is gonna be, uh, I was fooling around with orientation, so I did print it down like this, and it did get really gummed up here. Uh, I've since reprinted this uh, using it the normal way that I usually do it, and it, has it came out a lot better, but I've already sanded that. But in the areas that's not on the top that had all the supports, it is so incredibly smooth, there was almost no sanding involved. And you can see this is a pretty big helmet, and it fits uh, on my big noggin, and uh, I was able to print it on this, you know, one shot. Actually, I think I printed the next one 
because this was a little bit too small for the style of it, I printed it at 120%, and again, it printed out just fine. Now, here is the face mask for that helmet, and again, really smooth layer lines. Uh, I was able to fit this on the board really easily, and due to the 600 millimeters a second print speed on this, this thing will kick out prints like nobody's business fast and still look pretty decent. These were all printed out, again, on this, the fastest print speed. And again, this is a gauntlet that's gonna go up here for another thing I'm working on. And the layer lines are fantastic. I'm gonna sand this down, of course, and, and prime it and do everything to it, but that takes so much work out of it. And with the speed, I'm able to get a lot of these prints done super, super fast. And that's what's awesome. And that's a key thing that these types of really fast printers that just work uh, are great for, at least I'm loving them for, is I go ahead and I design something in Fusion 360 and I'm not sure about the tolerances. I print it out here really quick, you know, in an hour, sometimes a half an hour, sometimes 15 minutes, it's size on the size of the print, the thing is done. I can see if it fits together, if it doesn't, I can go upstairs, tweak it, and print it again really quick. So you're not only getting a machine that's pretty much, for me so far, bulletproof, as far as printing goes, uh, just good, nice looking prints, you've got something you can do a lot of prototyping on, which is what I use this for quite a bit. But at the same time, these are gonna be finished helmets and gauntlets that I've been printing on it that I've been really, really loving. So the one thing that everybody who owns one of these printers or even some of the bamboo printers that they do not like is where the filament is. Now, if you're wondering, if you've not seen one of these before, if you're looking for it, where is it? It's back here. It's in the back of the printer. And that's a pain. So I actually have this printer now on the floor under a table where I can get it at it sort of both sides. It's sort of like a little island. And then I can just sort of you know, go down there and change it out. But if I had this up against a wall, I would have to move this every time I needed to get at this. And that is crazy. The design of it is, it boggles the mind that someone thought that that was a good idea. <laughs> Cause really everything else on the printer, where, you know, the camera, the bed, you know, the, uh, the doors, this lid up here, um, all the other things are so well designed. The LCD screen is just, quick, responsive, big, uh, sharp. But then they said, I know what we'll do. Let's stick the filament where you gotta change all the time. Let's put it on the back. <laughs> so that's something I'm gonna change. I've been meaning to, but now that I took this uh, off of the uh, work area and brought it out here to do this video, uh, I can go ahead and finally install uh, this. And I got this over on uh, Shep's channel, uh, links below. Uh, an incredible channel, check it out. I'm sure you're subscribed, if not, definitely subscribe. And he designed this, and this is a side mount. And it will mount right here, let's see, right here. And then it uses the original uh, spool holder, and it'll screw in here, and I can just mount this to the side, and I can get it to filament really, really easy. So if you're gonna get one of these, uh, and if you're interested, links below. These are all affiliate links below. Uh, if you do get one of these, check out Chef's channel and get this. I looked at a lot of different designs out there. I even fooled around with making my own, and then I saw his, and I said, this is perfect. I can't, you can't, uh, can't make it any better than this. Unless someone out there has, and then let me know, and I'll, t I'll talk to people about it. But I really dig this one. So I'll be printing this, or putting this on here before I put it back in rotation. So here's just a few tips that I would like to impart about using this printer, the K1 Max. Uh, as you can see, I put the side spool holder on. Love that, love that. So I would definitely say print out a side spool holder. Che check out uh, Shep's, uh, you, unless you're using a different one, but his is darn near perfect. This took me minutes to put on. Uh, you just need uh, some longer screws and a little bit extra uh, tubing, Bowden tubing to, to replace, to, to reach around to the back of that. Now, that's the one thing I would do. The other thing you wanna watch out for and you wanna do is they don't recommend Creality for this printer, recommend having the glass lid on when you're printing PLA 
Uh, just because of the heat buildup, you don't need that with PLA. So I would definitely have that off. I haven't done any tests, uh, but um, since they recommend it, it's something I'm definitely gonna do from, from now on. Uh, it does make it a little more noisy, uh, but uh, I figure you know I'm running it and I'm not down here most of the time when it's running, so I don't really mind that. Well, it's kind of minor, it has to do with the camera. Now, this camera and this setup isn't made to make those buttery, you know, Instagram and TikTok time lapses. It's mostly used to be checking your print via the software, which I love and I use all the time. Some people though complaining it's too blurry, uh, which I saw in one of the, the groups, the Creality group for the printer on Facebook, which I would definitely sign up for if I was you. Um, there's a little piece of plastic on there, like protective plastic. You gotta take that off, because I didn't, and I saw that the camera was actually very cloudy, so take that off. And the last tip would be just what we talked about a little earlier, go online to Facebook and check out the, uh, the group for it. Uh, anytime you get a printer, really, check out the Facebook message group or the Facebook group for that printer, because you just get all kinds of tips and tricks and little problems if they come up, other people have had them, so definitely do that. Now, I've raved about this machine. What are some things that I think could be done to it to make it better? Uh, one, of course, let's get rid of these back, you know, filament mounts. We've talked about that. Why should I have to do that? The other thing is I'd like this to be an automated um, filament area here where you put the filament in and it automatically feeds the filament through to the extruder and to the hot end. Something like uh, on the uh, A1, the bamboo A1, where you start it and it just feeds it through all the tubing. This is a little bit of a pain because you've got to sort of feed it through. And in this junction here where it goes from the back of the machine to inside the machine and to the filament runout sensor, it's got just enough of a tight bend to it that you really sometimes got to force the filament through there and it's kind of a pain. Uh, so I'd really love to see some type of automated filament uh, area here. So it's really just in the filament and getting the filament into the machine. After that, it's, it's a breeze. And even that's not hard, but um, it's just one more step that I don't think that you're making such a plug and play machine. Let's go ahead and really just button it up as far as being bulletproof. Other than that, I love this printer. Now, what I'm gonna do now is show you how I put this thing together. Uh, if you wanna watch, go knock yourself out. If you don't, please like and subscribe and thank you for watching, I really appreciate it. Now, let's go ahead and put this guy together. Okay, so once you open the box, the first thing you're gonna find are the instructions and some stickers. Then we open it up and we've got the glass top and that's all assembled with the little handle. The next thing we come, boom, the printer. Uh, there's a little, little piece of styrofoam on there with the monitor, your power cable, and some other little cabling. And once we get that out, the printer is assembled, basically. Uh, we're just gonna go ahead and take, this took the most time, <laughs> actually putting, uh, ripping all that uh, cellophane off. And this is where our screen's gonna go. One thing I do wish is that the screen was, uh, like on some of the Neptunes, on a cable where you can actually sort of pick it up and hold it in your hand, uh, but not a deal breaker. Now in this one piece of uh, styrofoam, we've got the Hyper PLA that they give you a spool of, which is really nice, and some other little tools and some extra screws, and uh, they're all right in there. And then uh, in this one, we've got our little door handle. Tool-wise, we have standard tools, uh, some glue stick, things like that. Now, make sure you follow this part uh, or you're going to have some problems. You need to remove this plastic, but also then remove the three screws. Uh, one is in the back, you can see that arrow, and then one is on either side. So, you're just going to take those out. They give you the Allen wrenches for those. Now, there's three. I thought I was recording a third one, but I didn't. So don't forget to take all three out. you got your flexible uh, bed, which is really, really nice. You can flip it over and use both sides. You pop the screen on, and then it sort of just clips in the space. Again, I'd like it to be removable, but hey, what are you going to do? We go ahead and put the door handle on and uh, a couple screws. Boom, it closes up. 
remove this from the back. This is a fan with a nice little filter, so it's you know, supposed to get out some of the fumes. Now, if you don't put a new uh, side mount on, this is how you're going to install your uh, filament in the back and then feed it up through, and then you will switch it from unlock to lock, and there's your filament runout sensor. You put your lid on, and your assembly is done. Then it's just a matter of going through the software. It's going to ask you your language, and then, of course, walk you through Wi-Fi, Go ahead and add all that. That's very important so that you can run the settings to uh, update software if you need. Then it's just going to go through all of these steps. Now, the input shaping is actually where it will go through and, you know, check the surface that it's on and run through, like, vibrational and, like, how hard the motor is going to run so that it will then compensate that and make your prints better. So don't forget to do that. All right, everybody, thanks for watching this part where I put the machine together. As you can see, it was super easy, including putting on the filament holder from Chep. Again, if you want to pick up this printer, go ahead and check out the links below. They are affiliate links. Uh, so are the filament ones as well. Helps out the channel, get a few extra bucks. I buy more filament. That's how it works. All right, guys, take it easy. <laughs> thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.